Hi everybody, Melanie here. Welcome back to my channel. I've made this video to talk about trauma bonding, why it happens, why it's hard to break out of a toxic relationship when you're emotionally bonded to your abuser and what can help you break out of this. So I want to start by saying that looking online at videos and articles, it always seems to be regarding dating a narcissist. There's always this codependent and the narcissist and how to break the trauma bond from the narcissist and it's you can be trauma bonded to anyone regardless of if they're a narcissistic or not so i'm calling this a dysfunctional person for whatever reason this person's got anger issues this person has got traits of a cluster b personality disorder maybe this person is just full blown out bpd npd psychopath histrionic regardless if you feel that the shoe fits in what I'm talking about, if you can recognize, even though you might be in a bit of denial here, if this rings true to home and you recognize that you're experiencing abuse, if you are emotionally attached and bonded to someone who is causing you suffering, then listen to this video and hopefully this will help. So being trauma bonded to your dysfunctional partner, to the outset, to people who are looking in, they may be thinking and saying, why are you still with this person? You know, get out of this relationship. But it's not that simple and it's not that easy. For one thing, you may be reluctant to see that this is as bad as it is. Perhaps you've been keeping the extent to just how bad this is secret from friends and family because you want to protect your partner. Maybe your partner is being very controlling and saying, oh, you can't talk to this person, you can't talk to that person. It's their way of keeping you all to themselves so that you're less likely to leave. You're less likely to be influenced by outside opinions. So it's not easy to talk about this. And often people will go online instead as their first way to get some more information. So that's why I'm making this video. If this helps at all, then awesome. And if it's not helpful, then let me know in the comments below, okay? I want to hear your input as well. But these are just my thoughts about why this is happening and uh, how to break free from these bonds. Okay, so let's start from the beginning of this relationship when you first got together with your partner. Perhaps you were charmed by this person. Perhaps you experienced them seeing you, seeing your wounding, seeing you're wounded in a child and they said hey it's okay I you know I I see you I accept you and you felt seen you're like yes it feels great to be seen and it starts out really well this person adores you and flatters praises you says I can't live without you you're the best thing that happened to me the best thing since sliced bread and it's intoxicating and it's magical and it feels amazing to be in this close relationship with someone who seemingly sees us and we can be open and reveal to them our innermost secrets our painful wounds from the past yes i can trust this person however you start to notice that over a period of time that things aren't quite as great as they seemed your partner maybe starts getting angry starts seeing the angry side and it's happening more and more frequently. Maybe you are noticing their controlling side and they keep blaming it on work. Maybe or they're stressed. And um, you're putting it to one side and you're thinking, okay, maybe it's just temporary. Maybe this is just a temporary thing that it's not going to stay like this permanently. And you notice over time that things just start getting progressively worse. And you notice that your partner is now starting to blame you. If they haven't done so already, the blaming continues. Stop triggering me. Stop doing this. Stop doing that. You are causing me to be angry. You are causing me to act this way. And the disbelief, the shock, the fear of this happening often means that you are thinking, okay, I'll do better next time. What can I do to make my partner happy so that this doesn't keep happening so that we can go back to the happy place, the place when he initially or she initially was so seemingly in love with me. Why is this person who 
used to adore me and praise me and say all these wonderful things now is saying these nasty things to me. Why is this person treating me like this now? The cognitive dissonance that comes with this means that often we want to deny what's happening. We don't want to truly think about it. Instead, we will distract ourselves maybe, or we will rationalize it as it's me, it's my fault, um, I need to do better, or rationalize it with, this is work, it's her work, you know, this, my partner's stressed, so, you know, if I just leave them be and give them space and do what he or she wants me to do, then they'll be happier again and then we can go back to how it used to be. And before you know it, this ends up sliding into a relationship in which you're experiencing psychological abuse, emotional abuse, and sometimes physical abuse. And perhaps over time now you're noticing that your health is being adversely affected by this. When someone tends to um, have anger outbursts and you can't predict when they're coming, when someone responds inappropriately to something that was trivial, something that didn't need a burst of outrage and yet your partner just screams at you for such a tiny thing, what do you think this does to you? It puts us in a state of panic, or fear, activates the sympathetic nervous system, it means that we have elevated levels of cortisol, we panic, we tense. What this is, this is our own fight or flight mechanism telling us that there's a predator in front of us and we need to prepare to fight, to flee. But most people, the uh, codependent people, you as the partner, often you will submit, you will fawn by placating to the dominant person as a way of calming them down to avoid it escalating into a very violent, angry situation because it's too much, it feels too risky. And as such, what this does is they don't actually change their behavior over time. And you, your health just deteriorates. Perhaps your inner resolve starts to weaken. All the, the emotional abuse, all the words that they're saying that, you know, you're the reason I'm being this way. You know, you're the one who's causing my triggers. Your self-esteem, which was starting to peak a little bit at the beginning from being loved and adored by this charming person now is hitting an all-time low. It's low self-esteem, low feelings of self-worth, believing their horrible words, believing that you're the source of their anger, believing that you are the source of their stress, this is you that's doing it, believing all of this crushes you. And so if it's not anxiety, it's going to be panic attacks that kick in, emotional flashbacks to times in the past when you were treated this way may kick in, insomnia happens, and uh, depression. Depression is the worst because what this does is keeps us stuck. It keeps us stuck in an keeps us stuck in an unhealthy relationship because depression robs us of motivation. When we feel no longer motivated to get out of this, to question our partner to challenge them, to do something. Instead, we just fall into inertia and just feel stuck. This is dangerous because when we're in this place, we are less likely to reach out for help, less likely to do something to get out of this situation. Now to outsiders, it may seem weird, if not downright crazy, that you will be tolerating this. But there's a reason why you might be tolerating this. Has this happened to you in the past? How are your partners being? Your dysfunctional, controlling, toxic partner? Are his or her behaviours reminiscent of someone from your past? I'll give you a hint. Is it a family member? Is it mum or dad? The reason why I'm saying this is that our parents form as templates for us to accept what is normal behaviour when we become adults. So imagine that you have a dad who is taking out his anger on you when you're a kid growing up. You're not allowed to make mistakes. And if you do, if you don't live up to his expectations and you'd be scolded. And if you had a mum who would just be unpredictable in her outbursts, you can predict her emotional responses and 
As such, you are walking on eggshells around this parent. What is sadly quite common is having a parental figure who is taking out their anger on you like an emotional punching bag and then denying your experience, denying that they did anything wrong to the point of deliberately messing with your perceptions of reality. Now that's what we call gaslighting. When we grow up, the intimate relationships that we have with people are when we are feeling our most vulnerable and unconsciously we are driven by the past and any wounds that we haven't resolved from our childhood. So it makes sense that if you had a parent who was bullying you, who was taking out their anger on you, who was trying to control you, who was gaslighting you, then it makes sense that you will be more likely to tolerate this in a partner. But the reason why, not just because you're familiar with this, but because of what you're trying to seek unconsciously from your partner, a parent who just, you were never good enough. Your actions were not good enough. You were never mirrored in a positive way. You were never appreciated for anything that you did. You were ignored in anything good that you did and then berated, chastised and punished for anything bad that you did or any mistakes that you made. Is it no wonder then that perhaps you're a perfectionist now, that you don't feel good enough, that you procrastinate because often when we procrastinate it's because the thought of the project or the goal is perfect in our minds and when we actually start to implement it we fear that it's not going to be good enough, it's not going to live up to the fantasy of it being perfect. These are all symptoms of when we've had a parent or parents who are constantly just criticizing us. If you had a parent or parents who never really made you feel validated, who never expressed their unconditional love for you, if for them love was only conditional, meaning that I will love you if you do what I say, if you be who I want you to be, then it means that deep down we are driven by this need unconsciously for acceptance, to be loved, to be appreciated. So when we finally get a partner who seemingly sees our wounds and sees our inner wounded child and seemingly appreciates us and praises us, adores us at the beginning, and then they slide into acting like our parents did, criticizing, blaming, punishing, controlling. Is it no wonder then that you may want to stick around so that if I do this or that, then maybe they will change their minds. Maybe then they'll think, okay, you did good. Thank you. Well done. I love you. I accept you. We are seeking to correct our emotional experiences through intimate relationships that we have. But the sad truth is, is that when someone is truly dysfunctional, that we're not going to get it. We will keep trying and trying, but we're not going to get it. Another example of a dysfunctional parent, let's take a highly narcissistic mother, for example, who saw you as an extension of herself. And so as you grew up and you tried to individuate, which is, you know, part of child development, she resisted, she got angry. She's like, no, you will be who I want you to be. I want to be able to control you. I want you, my son, my daughter, to be my emotional punching bag, for you to be the blank screen for which I can project all my issues, all my shadow onto you, so that when you're being bad, then I can punish you so that I can feel better about myself for you to be the idealized version of me so that I can praise and finally feel happy. They don't see you as you and having your authentic needs. They see you how they want you to be. They are taking out their anger out on you. And the problem with a parent who is enmeshed with their child and doesn't want the child to individuate means that they will struggle with you leaving. You often find a parent then trying to guilt trip you into uh, not leaving them. Stay, stay, um, I need you, I need you to look after me, I need you to make me feel better about myself, I'm so lonely, I'd, you know, pity, pity me. And then you stay in the relationship and then they get angry at you and take out everything on you. I love you, I hate you, I love you, I hate you. So, you as an adult growing up, and then you have this relationship with this seemingly wonderful partner 
and then and then uh, you see their dark side, you see their dysfunction, you see them trying to experience them, trying to control you, being angry, punishing you, abusing you, and then you withdraw because you're not happy, you're suffering, maybe you're considering leaving, and they pick up on it, and your partner starts to panic maybe, and thinks, don't leave me, don't leave me, I will die if you leave, I cannot live without you. And there it is. Nothing like a good old guilt trip to pull you back into a dysfunctional relationship, into a codependent relationship. And it makes you realize I'd been in a codependent relationship with my mum or my dad. And here it is right in front of you, this pleading partner, pleading you not to leave because they cannot survive without you. Maybe they're threatening self-harm or suicide if you were to leave. Maybe they're pleading, begging, saying, look, I will change. I won't hurt you anymore. I'll go to therapy. Just don't leave me. So you believe them and you stay. But they don't change. They don't get help. Things keep happening the same. They keep taking it out on you. you keep getting angry. The emotional abuse the psychological abuse, the physical abuse, it still happens. And any time you muster that self-resolve, that inner strength to finally leave or to challenge them or to say that you're not happy. And then once again, whether it's the blame saying, you are, you know, I, I will be fine if you just stop triggering me. You know, this wouldn't happen if you just stop stressing me out. You see this, you know, blaming you for how they are. This is an example of an external locus of control. Dysfunctional people, personality disordered people all have this. Blaming their inner states, their behavior, the way they feel and how they're thinking on you. Or if it's not you, on other people. They really struggle to take any sort of accountability or responsibility for how they're treating you, for how they're dealing with their stress. You're the punching bag. You are the scapegoat. You are enabling this by staying in the relationship. Now, if you can relate to wanting approval from your partner, your dysfunctional partner who's treating you this way, and you think, this is all my fault. Maybe if I do this, maybe if I do that, then he or she will love me again like how they used to. Is this the inner child in you talking? Because when we're children, we often blame ourselves for how our parents are treating us. You know, to us as kids, as little kids, our parents are gods. So when our parents blame us, we believe them. Always we believe them. So when we are in an intimate relationship as an adult and we've opened up to this partner, you know, we've shared our secrets and our inner wounded child you know, resonates with their inner wounded child. And then they start controlling, abusing, manipulating, damaging us and wounds from the past, unconsciously we are thinking, it is my fault. Same in a child that believed that it was your fault many years ago, still thinking it now. And so as a way of trying to manage that pain is to believe and to think, maybe if I do this or that for my partner, make him or her happy, then I'll feel better within myself. I'll resolve this in the pain that I'm feeling but a dysfunctional partner will keep doing this. It's never enough. They just keep moving the goalposts of expectations further and further apart. So no matter how much you try, no matter how much you change yourselves, no matter how much of your lifestyle you change, break up friendship groups, remove your friends from your life, change your hobbies, your lifestyles, your work, you change everything so that finally my partner can love me how he or she used to love me. It's never enough. They will keep going. And this is how the trauma bond keeps strengthening. One of the most painful things about being trauma bonded to someone, especially if they remind you of a parent who used to do the same things to you, a parent who used to punish you, who used to scream at you when you, for no reason, a parent that you had to tiptoe around, walking on eggshells around. And if your partner is now doing this, what it's going to do is that it's going to uh, trigger emotional flashbacks when 
you may not have in the visual, but emotionally you are taken back to the time when you were a child and you were experiencing these very, very painful emotions. And this itself can trigger the dysfunctional partner. Like, why are you reacting like this? Stop it, snap out of it. I need you to be like this for me. I need you to be like this for, for that. So as a result, it's never truly processed. It's, it's just pushed to one side and it keeps happening. You'll keep happening again and again. And it can happen at places at work, not just at home. And this is a sign that your body, your psyche, your feelings are telling you that something is wrong. So part of the healing for you is to resolve the situation now so that you are in a safer environment. You need to get yourself in a safe environment and to also seek your own healing to address the inner wounds from the past. So what to do if you resonate with this and you are stuck in a dysfunctional, abusive, toxic relationship and you need help breaking this trauma bond. First thing to do, if your partner has been saying that I will do better, I'm going to change, I'm going to seek therapy, I'm going to work on myself, sit down and think, are they actually making any changes? Have they made any efforts? Have they taken any steps whatsoever into improving themselves? Now, if they have, is the pace that they're going at sufficient for you? Is this okay for you? Can you live with this? Is this like a healthy challenge? Is this supporting you? Or is this still destroying you? If they aren't making any changes, how many times have they been telling you that I'm going to change? And then you placate, you stay, you submit, you fawn, and nothing changes. How long has this been going for? You need to write this down on paper to say that you can have a sobering look to help break you from any sort of denial that you have about what's going on. Denial is the number one thing that keeps us initially from seeking help, from realizing that something needs to change. So if you realize that your partner is not changing, even though he or she may have promised that they're going to go to therapy, they're going to change, they won't take out their anger at you, they won't hurt you anymore. But that's all been a big fat lie. Now is the time for you to dig deep into any whatever shred of inner resolve that you have and think, I don't deserve this. Life is short. We're not meant to, we don't, why waste it on someone who doesn't appreciate and value you? There are millions of other people in the world. Why waste it on someone who's just treating you like this? And if you think that you don't deserve better, you deserve to have a better relationship with yourself. If you've got children as well, don't you want to be a good role model for them to show that actually you can walk away from situations and from people who disrespect you, who torment you, who control you, who abuse you. Now is the time to show yourself that you love yourself and that's by treating yourself with respect, putting yourself in a safe environment and tending to your wounds. Seek out support and reconnect with friends, trusted friends. Find a safe place for you to go to and plan an exit strategy. Think about the past. Think about when you were a kid. Would you want to be in a situation where you are still being abused by someone? Or do you want to be living a life in which you are free? Freedom is the most precious gift that any one of us can have. It's the most important thing in my opinion, freedom. Freedom physically and freedom psychologically. Would you, would you, a little version of yourself, would uh, the child in the past want you to be living this way? Or do you think that the child version of you would want you to be free, to be happy? Make the right choice, which means that you can do what's best for your health, for your psychological health, for your physical health. Maybe you also need to have a shift in perspective you may want to stay with this dysfunctional partner because you still care about them. You know, you're, you love them. You feel bad at the thought about you leaving them and perhaps fear that they will actually hurt themselves if you left. But think of it this way. If you were to stay and they just don't change, 
you're going to be enabling their behavior. You're telling them that it's okay for them to act this way because you will still stick around. Maybe, just maybe, they need to hit rock bottom in order for them to finally be motivated to do something, to seek help finally. So you leaving may actually be the instigator for them to finally seek help. So don't think that you sticking around because you feel sorry for them, because you love them, is going to be helping them. In fact, it's quite the opposite. And it's scary, it's hard, and because you've left them, it doesn't mean that the pain won't go away again. If anything, it gets worse initially because the flashbacks appear, the horror of what happened, the anger at yourself for allowing this to go on for so long, questioning whether you did the right thing. This is all normal. It's, it's, it's okay if you're thinking and feeling this way, but just know that things do change. Time passes and you can and you will improve so long that you are keeping yourself safe and you are tending to yourself with love and seek out help to help you make sense of what's happened, to address issues from the past that meant that you were seeking love and approval from someone who was acting this way. And if you need any help, if you can resonate with this, drop me an email. I'm a counsellor, I help people who have been in situations like this. Uh, my email address is in the description box below. So I'm going to end it here. Do let me know your thoughts in the comments below and uh, speak to you next time. Bye bye.